Hi guys and welcome back. Today is my big traditional piece of the week, which I like to do on Saturdays. And as usual, I'm doing watercolor. It's my favorite medium as it's probably apparent from my channel, but I do like watercolor. And today I'm working on hot press paper and this is actually 300 pounds. So it's super thick paper. I adore this paper. I don't actually remember right off the top of my head what the brand is, but I will have a link to everything that I do use down in the description. So if you want to check any of that stuff out, it'll be right down there. But we can jump right in. So just a little bit of information for what I'm doing right here. I'm doing the line work and I actually do all of it in Micron pens and it really hurt my hand by the time I got done with this one. I usually like to incorporate both that and a bottle of ink and do brushwork with my ink, but I actually ended up getting the wrong size of brush when I went to get my replacement for my last inking brush that is failing. It is no longer sharp enough for that. So I didn't have a brush that was quite sharp enough for that. So I decided to end up just doing micron pens entirely. And those can be very rough on your hands, but I am glad that I went that route because I was able to get the precision that I wanted. And I had a lot of details in this one and a lot of small shapes that I wanted to be sure was very clear. But a little bit about this piece itself. I really wanted to do a piece that felt like springtime. I, like everyone else, I'm sure is sick of winter, but this past week has been particularly warm where I'm at. So a lot of the snow's been melting and it's actually been raining, which it may sound dreary where there's actually still snow on the ground and it's raining, but I loved it. I love rain and it was just so exciting to start seeing that warmth was coming back. So I definitely wanted to do a piece that made me feel that warmth and that springtime emotion that I had. So that definitely was the root of what inspired this piece and what got me moving and thinking about for this one. So when I started off, I was looking up a lot of reference. And at first I had an idea of doing a character on the beach. So a character in a swimsuit. And I was trying to think of a way to make it kind of uniquely my own. I like to include more fantastical elements into all of my characters and that type of setting. So I was looking for a way to make sure that it wasn't just a character at a beach. I wanted to make sure that it was true to something that I would enjoy doing. And as I was looking at that, I was looking up a lot of different references for swimsuits and a lot of different photographs to get my ideas going. It slowly mutated from her being on the beach to more in a meadow type environment, which is definitely good for me because it did reflect the colors that I wanted. And in the end, it ended up being more of an environment that's hinted at. So it feels like she's there without me having to be very literal with the way that I am showing it. I don't have to draw every detail in the background for it to feel like she's in a meadow type environment. Whereas what I was first sketching out, I was being very specific and literal. And I do like this one a little bit more, at least for today, where I could get that mood that I wanted. Cause that's the thing that I was really thinking about and was most important for me is getting that feeling down. And right off the bat, I knew what color I wanted to base this piece around. And I find actually that it's really helpful if you're struggling with figuring out a color palette for a piece, think of that one main color that you'd like to base it all around. And then you can choose colors that reinforce that. So for this one, I knew that I wanted her to do, to be in more of a wheat field feeling sunset, wheat fields where it's really golden and there's all these beautiful yellow tones. So I knew immediately that that's what I wanted. I love wheat fields and there's several wheat fields around where I live and it's just gorgeous. So I knew that the yellow orange was the primary color that I was going to base all this off of. That was going to be the background color. And once I knew that it all just easily came into place. I knew that I wanted her clothing to be white ish. I wanted to have a lot of colors reflecting on her like it was bouncing off of different areas and I just wanted it to really feel very prismatic without being very saturated and bright and I definitely have been enjoying this kind of a take on color 
because I've been trying really hard to think a little bit more layers and looseness in the way that I'm painting with watercolors rather than going in and painting an entire section, say purple or gray or whatever the color is. I'm trying to think through how can I be more dynamic in the way that I'm getting to that final color, which is definitely some something that I really need to work on. I want to work on more dynamic ways of coloring. And this one, I think that I was a lot better at least at reining it in so that I wasn't jumping the gun into one final color that I was just filling it all in. This one, I was very careful with making sure that I was layering up the colors and adding a lot of different colors into it before I put in a darker value to it. So for her hat and for this like dress type area where there's all this fabric, I knew that I wanted it to almost be kind of like a gray where I wanted the highlights to be very white, but then I also wanted the darks to be this gray color so that I hinted at that and it would be a little bit neutral, but still have all these shades of color popping in it. And I'm actually really happy with the way that it did turn out. This is definitely the direction that I want to go more. I want to do colors that are peeking in and out. And that's the same technique that I did for her skin as well, where I wasn't adhering specifically to making sure that her skin was like one realistic color throughout. I was giving her extra red around her cheeks and her nose and her fingertips, and then a little bit of yellow and then blue for the shadows. And it really just has this unearthliness that I like about it. And I like that it frees me to be a lot more interpretive with the way that I'm coloring things like this, like the skin and like her clothing. I'm not strictly confined to, I need to paint all of her skin, a skin tone, and then I need to do her dress this color. So it has definitely been releasing me from this little box that I've kind of put myself in and the way that I have painted. And I really enjoyed it. And I enjoyed working on her skin, I think the most, and the way that I ended up looking. And towards the end, I decided that I wanted to change some of the details to more of a dark gray color. I believe it's Payne's gray that I use most in the skirt where that gray depth of color comes from or depth of value that is. It was a Payne's Gray and I realized that I wanted to have that a little bit more harmonious with the rest of the piece. So I wanted to show that Payne's Gray more throughout it so that it would keep your eyes circulating around and it wouldn't feel unbalanced, especially in the values. So those plants that are coming out of her hat, they were very much the same value as the sky behind her. So they were getting lost and it was detail that I liked and you couldn't really see it anymore. So I decided to change that to the dark gray. I also changed some of the detailing that was more of a yellow color down to this dark gray again. And and I definitely think that it fits with the character that I wanted a little bit more. It does have a little bit more mystery to it. And I like overall how she looks with these dark details rather than the yellow details that were getting a little bit lost. And the last final step that I took for this piece is I used my white ink and I have been really enjoying using this. I haven't really used it a ton for a long time now. I'll usually use it for just like highlights in the eyes or kind of erasing some areas. It's a nice little fix for some mistakes. But in the past few pieces, I've been incorporating it a lot more and letting it be a design element in and of itself rather than a very tiny accent. And I really love it. So this one, I did a lot more of this like gushy kind of a highlight on a lot of the plants. And I think that it definitely added a lot more luminosity to them and a little bit more life. I also went into the background and added a lot of like little white dots and I loved that little detail. It's very subtle and you can see it a lot better in person, but I do think it mimics the way things kind of like float in the air in fields like this and how they catch the light. And I definitely wanted that really soft, hazy, field-like look to it. So this ink worked really great for that. And my big problem with this ink is that it's not 100% opaque, but it did work really well for that application where the yellow was still peeking through a little bit and it wasn't this like stark white on top of it. It was just really very soft effect that I wanted. And that is it for today's video. I loved working on this one. I really actually am very happy with the color palette as well as the technique that I used to paint. I think that it was a lot more 
interpretive, which I like. It is right in the direction that I want to go where it's not so like in the box, very specific. So I'm really happy with her. But as usual, I've got the original available at my shop. So if you want to own some original artwork, this is on my shop. I also have prints of her as well. So if you'd like to have a cheaper option to own her, that is available. And I'll have a link down in the description as well as in my end card that'll happen in just a second. And another reminder, I will have a link to all the tools that I use in the description and if you haven't subscribed yet please do and hit that bell and you'll get notifications on when I post and I do post Tuesdays Thursdays and Saturdays and that is pretty much it for today so I will see you guys in my next one